Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Lost Kingdoms. As always, I'm PA and today we're going to be exploring the Temple of Amentank. For this I've made a new deck called Earthfoe, filled to the brim with neutral and wood elemental cards. I am going to tear this temple apart. So, let's get going, shall we? A great turtle. Can't imagine what's so great about him. Oh, Red Fairy right off the bat, thank you. Yes, I have. <laughs> okay, this is this is uh, a unique mechanic for this level only, thankfully. But what it means is that it's exactly what it sounds like. You have to go to the back, you have to find the treasure, unspecified. They have to bring it back here. What that means is you literally have to go get an item that causes a trigger within the level and then wander back to the very beginning and there you have a boss fight. So, since this is the Earth stage, it is going to be loaded to the brim with... a. uh... It's going to be loaded to the... Really? This? This is your favorite place in the temple. Alright, if you say so. But yeah, it's going to be filled to the brim with Earth Elemental Monsters. Speak of the devil. So, I have packed a couple of powerful cards, but those Katoblapas, Katoblapa, whatever you call them, they are going to be the bane of my existence. They may be stationary, but they are some of the worst creatures in this level. However, the Fenril card, or Fenrir card, is extremely good at taking out any and all Earth Elemental monsters, so it's good to pack a couple, especially since you should have a couple if you played the Hupon Chen stage first. So I'm kind of going through these in order of weakness, if you will. Sphinx card, though. Oh, have I wanted that. The Sphinx is an excellent card. Just a long distance, single damage. Think like Earth Elemental Banshee, but it does way more damage. It's great. It's a great card. It's unfortunate that you have to level up a mummy so much to get it since I never use mummy. That was a cheap shot and you know it. So this is a juggernaut. We've seen them maybe once before and... Let's say we've seen them once before. Why isn't the Banshee hitting? You know, I... Even now, I'm not... I'm still not quite sure. Maybe it's underneath its hitbox and that was also a cheap shot. Maybe it was underneath its hitbox, maybe it was just not quite suited for it, but it was kind of, uh, unfortunate. Also, long wind-up times on the- are you kidding me? Long wind-up times on the Chaos Knight make it pretty- pretty difficult to- okay, come on. Thank you. As I was saying, long recharge times on the Chaos Knight, or long charge times rather, make it fairly difficult to land, but it's still pretty good against the Katoblapa, so it's still a good card to pull into the level with you. You know, three hits, weapon card, but it... You know, we actually have some lore here, so I'm gonna be quiet about the Chaos Knight. Let you all read that. Okay, and the only reason that you don't know about the other continent is because there's a giant wall of light in between the two. I actually think that these stories may have also gone in weakness order, but they either start with fire or water. So I kind of started halfway through the story and I'll be getting the rest as we continue. So we just need to find the treasure in the te receptacle. No, that's, that's, a, that's a bust. It's a head. It's a it's a head on a wall. That's a bust. It's not a receptacle. I'm sorry. And I got stuck on a candle, and here's why the level can be a pain in the ass. Zombie dragons are everywhere in this level, and I mean goddamn everywhere. Like, you can't walk ten feet without tripping over a dragon. This place is lousy with giant undead dragons. It's kind of unfortunate. Now, the reason that it's unfortunate is mostly just because of the fact that they have 200 HP. These things are tanks, like you have not seen, mostly because they are the exact same enemy that you ran into a boss version of earlier in the Burned-In Field, I want to say its name was. 
which means that they literally just copy paste it, except it's now a regular enemy you can find throughout the stage, which means that you're going to run out of cards. A lot. All right. Two Banshees and a Chaos Knight later, we can finally continue. However, if you ever wanted to catch a bunch of zombie dragons, now's your chance. I'm pretty sure these guys are catchable since they aren't classified as boss monsters. But yeah, so, ooh, could this achievement that comes to a test? Okay, so I'm assuming our test is get the, get the treasure. Is this the treasure? No, this is a behemoth. Which admittedly is still a useful creature, the earth element equivalent of the Fenril, or Fenrir. And of course we find yet another zombie dragon. Maybe the treasure is back here. Oh yeah, no, this looks like a treasure room to me. Is this what we're supposed to bring to the front of the temple? The necklace of the Pharaoh. Nope, nope, we found a bust. That is not a receptacle, that is a bust, and we're gonna put a necklace on it. You wanna open a door, you put a necklace on a Pharaoh. You give him a gift, you make him wanna open the door. That's how it works. You... Fucking zombie dragons. I swear to God. Whoever decided that this place should just be filled to the brim with zombie dragons should be forced to walk through here and fight them. Repeatedly. So, naturally, you need to get to the receptacle and you need to place the necklace on... If this is another zombie... Of course it is. Of course it's another zombie dragon. Why wouldn't it be another zombie dragon? So you put this necklace on the statue of the pharaoh here. It releases a strange sound, and these walls lower. These actually lower throughout the temple, so now you have some different paths to take. And here it is, the treasure, the thing we've been sent to get, and it is! It's, that's not a treasure, that's literally a pharaoh. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's actually the dead pharaoh. Is there a hidden treasure? No, no, there's, there's no hidden treasure, that's, that's literally it. It's a mummy. You have to go back here and get a mummy card. That's your goal. That's your task. That's what the turtle wants you to do. He just also wants you to happen to fight half a dozen zombie dragons along the way. Easy. Piece of cake. Oh, thank goodness. No zombie dragons. So, as you may notice, I'm kind of down to 13 cards. Um... Like I said, you fight this many zombie dragons, you're gonna start to run a real quick and get over here you piece of garbage you're gonna run out of cards pretty quick however chaos knights are still able to one shot juggernaut so if you can take aim if you can predict the path which i'm pretty sure they only turn when they hit a wall so that's not exactly unlikely you might just be able to make it through but what's this there's a wall down there we can't take that path anymore Give me a card back, please. Get... Oh. I'm not even mad anymore. Of course there's another zombie dragon. Oh, and also, uh, steel skeletons have a tendency to kind of, sort of, miss zombie dragons with some of their attacks. They also only deal 16 damage, so, um... If you're trying to take it down, you might be waiting a while. Also, don't forget, necromancers will consume skeletons to fire skulls when they're cast. And these skulls do not deal nearly as much damage as the skeletons would. Basically what I'm saying is don't, don't sacrifice your steel skeletons. You know, if there were a title for being a dragon slayer, we would have earned it a couple of times by now. But that's not important. What's important is that we continue through this set of ruins. Okay. Griffins are actually not that bad a monster. They will dive at you and they will increase the power of friendly earth elemental creatures, but it's not really the worst. Their dive attack is mediocre at best and you can still try to take out other enemies in the meantime. Not to say you'll succeed, but you can certainly try.
Oh, Jesus, finally. That took like three minutes. You didn't see it. That was just a steel skeleton chasing around a juggernaut for three full minutes. But hey, we're nearly to the end. We're nearly there. We still... So, as you can see, I am running away from battle. Or I'm trying to. But this is a temple in which you cannot escape from fights. Because zombie dragons count as bosses. So if you find that you've gotten this far and you're, you're running a little low on cards, this level may not, in fact, be beatable for you. Especially if you whiff your Chaos Knights like that. So I could use the White Tiger here, but it's just not worth it. I'm down to three of six cards. I'm down to two of six cards, and one of them is a Steel Skeleton, one of them is a one-use Tiger. We have to leave. There was just no chance. So we're gonna fix this deck, and we're gonna fix it right the heck now. First off, maybe not so many Banshees. They keep flying the head over the head of a bunch of enemies. In fact, you know what? Let's just check out all the wood cards. Let's find out what's good. Tricksters. They're all right, as I found out later. I didn't use them here. Sorry for that. Caterpokers. Decent, but an early game enemy. They're not going to be powerful enough. Whipworm. Actually proved itself useful in the second run through the temple. Not a bad card. Might use it in subsequent playthroughs. Another Fenril. Don't know why I'm not packing more of these. There we go. Good job. Necromancers, don't work with the Steel Skeletons. Steel Skeletons have a little bit of trouble chasing Juggernauts. Cockatrices, Mandragoras, good cards, and the Unicorn. I figure if I need some cards back, Unicorn gives me 3 to 5 and some healing. But as it turns out, I only ran into literally one battle on my second run through the temple. Just ran straight through this thing, no stopping. Front to back, one battle. So, boss fight time. This is the turtle, the great turtle, and two sphinxes, which makes this thing a pain in the ass. I didn't know if the Fenril infected off-screen enemies, so I wanted to make sure everybody was on screen before I fired. Just over a hundred damage to everything there. The sphinxes will do their actual attack at you, which is pretty much global range, or effectively global range in this room. And the turtle will continually fire shots at you, so it is actually quite the difficult fight if you don't get a powerful AoE attack to take out the Sphinxes pretty early. However, once you've taken them out, the turtle is slow to fire and his attacks are even slower to land. So unless you're standing completely still, chances are he's not really going to be able to land a hit on you. Just keep circling around him and the great turtle turns out to be... not so great. We gotta kill him with a Fenril, right? So let's get it back. I could just cycle through anyway, but we gotta see a Unicorn cast at least once. How majestic. There it is. Let's finish him off with a Fenril. I'm sorry, those are Sphinxes, according to the score screen there. Let me just, uh, that was, that was a pair of Sphinx. Can I, can I see that again? Thank you. I just had to, I had to prove that's definitely a Sphinx. And of course, I don't get, I don't get some Sphinxes of my own, but I do get a Great Turtle. The Great Turtle is the most powerful independent monster in the game. It is pretty much exactly what you just faced, like literally almost no change. Maybe a little bit less health, or possibly even about the same amount of health, but... Hey, we got a couple of red fairies, so it's time to visit the fairy house. We gotta see what we earned. Alexander, give me the good news, friend. Actually, wait, we totally don't have enough fairies to... to give to Alexander. Oh. Uh, never mind. Anyway, next time we're going to the Terjan Temple, and this one I've planned ahead for.